on Spirit Tomb. There's only 60 hit points on that Spirit Tomb. And when Dragapult meet VMAX deals 50 damage to the bench, that really puts a lot of pressure on Ross to make some uh, some interesting plays in order to get these knockouts onto Henry without getting returned. Uh, knockout return. Yeah, that's right. Let's go ahead and take a look at Henry Brand, our world champion, reigning world champion. He's going to be playing that Dragapult VMAX deck that we did see from Tord. Got a little bit of an interesting twist here. Does play that 1-1 one, one Malamar, so he doesn't get stuck in those spots like Tord did with the uh, the, the awkward missing energy. He, he has that energy acceleration built in, even if it is a small line. And we see that he's definitely a, a great player to contend against. He's got multiple regional uh, championships, including the one that he obtained this year. And he's a world champion, man. Yeah, this would be a resume that's impressive for just about everybody. But when you look at the years in which this resume uh, what has been created, it's that's that becomes even more impressive. The short run that he's had has just been phenomenal. However, when you look at Ross, you start to see a different story. You start to see how all of these years are so spread out. He was a world finalist in 2005 and 2011. That's two different decades in which Ross has been at the very pinnacle of Pokemon play. Yeah, and we do see that his deck is that Spear Tomb and Jinx. Jinx is going to be very interesting to see how he starts to spread around that damage, hopefully avoid getting knocked out uh, by that Dragapult VMAX. Yeah, we did mention how Spear Tomb, again, being a dark Pokemon, does kind of have a bit of an advantage against Dragapult VMAX, but having the 60 hit points puts it at a disadvantage. It's going to be a really interesting matchup, and I can't wait to get down to the field and see these players play out on this second match in this round one of the Pokemon Players Cup Invitational. Now we do see Henry Brand against Ross Cawthon. Henry Brand on the bottom of the screen, Ross Cawthon on top. That means that Henry wins this coin flip and chooses to go first. And Team Dragapult V match, we like to see the Dragapult V come down early with an energy and really start to set the pace of the game early on here for, uh, for Henry. Yeah, this is not the hand to do it, though. He's He's got the wrong Dracopult in his hand. So fortunately did find that mysterious treasure that is going to open up a bunch of different opportunities for him now. And here's the thing is because that mysterious treasure came down, that means that all Henry has to do is find himself a way to find an energy. You know, I say all he has to do, but really that's that's kind of a it's kind of a big deal. He does play energy spinner himself, but I believe he only plays one. So that makes it a little bit harder for him to uh, find that energy spinner with Jirachi than it would for somebody like Tord with that uh, more consistent list. Yeah, I, d I do love seeing the inclusion because it means that the players are aware of how important that first energy attachment is. Aren't going to see it just yet. And yeah, I think that's going to be a whiff unless he does have a way to to switch around. Of course, he could uh, use a skateboard and scoop up net uh, to manipulate this and reuse the Jirachi. Uh, although it is a little bit awkward. Yeah, he does, he does choose to do that, takes advantage of the fact that he has scoop-up net, goes for it again, but he misses the second time here. So uh, this time he can find something like a reset stamp or per, per, perhaps a, uh, um, a long-term supporter like a professor's research or boss's orders. Chooses actually to go with the scoop-up net. So I guess we'll have to wait and see if the second turn is a little bit more kind to Henry, but the first turn, although it provided a Dragapult B, did not provide an energy. Yep, and over on Ross's side, now he really has to... He's, this is the one turn that he has a great opportunity ahead of him. He could play down Spirit Tombs. He could start to use his ability and put damage counters onto himself because he knows he isn't a threat of being knocked out just yet from a Dragapult VMAX on the following turn, which is a great place to be if you're a Spirit Tomb deck. You didn't think you'd have this opportunity. That Acrobike finding the Jinx. Remember, the Jinx is such a crucial part of this uh, little... Uh, combination of cards here from Ross, so absolutely had to find that card instead of uh, instead of the quick ball. Now find now uses the quick ball in his hand to find himself the very first spirit tomb of the game. And at this point, you start to take a look at your prizes. You start start to figure out uh, how your game plan has to change depending on which what's prized. Luckily for him, all four spirit tomb are still in the deck, so that does make things a little bit easier here at the start of the game here for for Ross. Yeah, that, that does give him a little bit of breathing room. Potentially, we'll have multiple attackers to to eye down and take these big knockouts that he's going to need if he wants to put up a fight in this match. And now he's just starting to look through, see what else is going on in his deck. Does, of course, have that hustle belt, but uh, getting to that that 
hit point marker that you need to be at to really manipulate your damage and start doing a ton enough for even a, a v max knockout is gonna have to be uh something that jinx helps you along with there is spirit tomb immediately coming down and immediately finding himself in energy now spirit tomb and jinx both on the uh on the bench is very nice uh, especially when your opponent doesn't have any energy in play but at this point you really want to start to set your board up so that you can potentially boss his orders on the second turn if you do that you could potentially just uh take uh take henry right out of the game because of that missed energy but it doesn't seem like he has a boss's orders in his hand quite yet and of course only has one spirit team in play as of right now yeah the way that ross has his deck built he plays a ton of different draw supporters because that is his main way to get through his deck doesn't want to be filling his board with the denes or something like that so uh, we are going to see a lot of the time his the support for the turn is just going to be drawing and finding a turn for a boss's orders has to be something that he sets up uh, a few turns in the making. Chose to hold the uh, acro bike in hand for the following turn. Chose not to try to hit a second spirit tomb before the end of the first turn. And I think he's really just banking on Henry's uh, Henry's poor start uh, on the first turn. Really uh, being behind the turn here for Henry is not where he wants to be. And I think that that lets Ross play a little bit more uh, passively here. As now, again, Henry at this point now starts his second turn. Wants to start getting these additional uh, Pokemon in play. But really wants to start setting up some energies and perhaps an Inke um, for the following few turns. Yeah, he does see that it's very important because if your Pokemon gets wiped off the board, uh, if there is a way to remove that that Dragapult, you're going to need a return knockout uh, following. You can't let Spirit Team last multiple turns, uh, but he is instead going to go ahead and take that Mew. Mew is a great way to actually provide some offense. He does have that Psy power available to him and could start spreading some damage counters uh, with the Mew even, and uh, take some interesting knockouts here and there. Yeah, the thing about Spirit Tomb is it is not uncommon for Spirit Tomb to be down to 30 hit points remaining. As a matter of fact, it kind of wants to get there so that Hustle Belt uh, becomes, uh, becomes stronger. The thing is, once you get down to 30 hit points remaining, that's an easy knockout out of side power for Mew. Yeah, now, we see that Henry has to now decide if he's going to I mean, honestly, I don't know if his hand's going to let him do much. He didn't find an energy again. Yeah, that's that's kind of been the most brutal part of this match here for for Henry so far. Despite finding all the Pokemon he really needs, um, he's really struggled with the energies as he still does not have a single energy in play yet. Already played a supporter for the turn. That means, I mean, unless you play a, uh, a Jirachi here, you're probably not finding an energy this turn. Or a Dedenne, of course. Yeah, and I, I think we are at that that desperation stage right now, and he's he's considering it right now, maybe even using the switch first, depending on how much he values the Mew here. And uh, it looks like he is he is willing to just leave the Mew in the active spot. Yeah, so that does find the, the psychic energy though. That was very important here for for Henry, as that's now going to allow him to start setting up some potential offense on the following turn. Maybe even this turn if he if he decides to uh, actually no he didn't have the switch. <laughs> I think I think Psy Power is a little uh, counterintuitive here because he's gonna need to have uh, the the V Max going right now. And you're absolutely right. As now we do see that acro bike that was held uh, at the end of last turn, finding another acro bike. So really just kind of thinning the deck at this point. And now the second Acrobike about to get played, looking for some sort of additional uh, Spirit Tomb output, uh, really wants to take advantage of the fact that Henry is so far behind on energies and uh, just kind of isn't where he wants to be. If he can find a Spirit Tomb for the for the knockout onto the Dragapult VMAX, it's going to be very important. That's really what, what Ross is looking for right now. Yeah, he's just slowly but surely trying to find his way there. Did find a second Jinx, so that's a great way to to continue to move damage counters around and manipulate how, um, if you can avoid Henry getting those knockouts, uh, you can just start to stockpile some damage on your Jinx or even your Deden HEX if you want to. Just put it somewhere and then switch it to Spirit Tomb on the turn that it matters. The card that has been played so little as since Boss's Orders came out, Great Catcher, choosing to uh, play the Great Catcher before playing a Cynthia, bringing back the, uh, the Danny GX onto the active position here for, for Henry before finding six new cards for himself is Ross and now finds another Spirit Tomb. Could potentially start setting up multiple Spirit Tombs against this Dragapult VMAX. 
it's it's a better spot than I think I would expect for Ross, given um, uh, before the game would have started. I will agree with that statement. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a great spot, and it, it's it's not a bad spot. He, he's putting himself in a position where he can really start to deal a lot of damage, potentially taking this knockout on this turn if he if he wanted to do so. And he's going to have that spear to him. But honestly, we know if you only have sp- two spear to him in play, double knockout is only a Galarian zigzagoon away. <laughs> Yeah, you almost don't want to play the spirit team. Like you just assume yeah, that they're going. We'll have the Galarian Zigzagoon. You don't want to risk that. And and uh, Ross agrees as he chooses to just take the knockout. Anguish cried, knocking out the the Dene GX of just one hit. And you see how, despite being so fragile, you want to talk about a glass cannon. That's the real glass cannon right there. As Spirit <laughs> Team only has sixty hit points, brings itself down to thirty in order to get a one hit KO against the one hundred and sixty HP Pokemon into Dene. Yeah, this this is where uh, you start to see just how fragile Ross's deck is, but also a very very aggressive. Uh, it's he's got to hold onto these cards in his hand, and that's where you see maybe Reset Stamp could start to provide uh, some help to Henry here, buy him some time if he can put Ross on a pretty bad hand, uh, even getting some damage onto that that Jirachi possibly uh, taking a double knockout there and leaving Ross with four cards in hand and a couple jinx seems like a really good turn and we get to see the top portion of our screen shows us the four card hand here for uh for ross after henry played that uh that reset stamp we see only a jirachi and a, a couple of other item cards that don't really provide additional cards in hand here for ross so that's not a great hand here for ross after that reset stamp yeah, and of course, Henry did have that boss's order, so was able to line up the double knockout and remove the Jirachi. This just puts Ross on a really awkward spot where his deck's going to need to help him out. He does have a ton of supporters for situations like this, but we don't see one in his hand right now. And interestingly, and perhaps correctly, definitely correctly, Henry chose to actually put all the damage counters onto the Spirit Tomb, despite only three of them being needed to knock it out. Did not want to add additional damage onto Ross's field, leaving Ross's field without any damage on it. We know how important it is for Ross to have additional damage counters on his own field. So very heads up play here by uh, by Henry to end the turn. Yeah, I like, I like seeing that. It, 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 although this is a matchup that you don't, typically find all too often it looks like he has a really good idea of how to avoid uh, this knockout happening right here and there's jirachi now stellar wishing looking at the options looks like a skateboard and scoop up net combined with boss's orders are the only three cards he can find with jirachi look at the hand though kyle yeah are we gonna see a burst <laughs> like what else is there uh you could go for the uh, for the burn uh try to burn and confuse um henry there i don't know oh choosing maybe just, maybe just try again <laughs> Drachi, you didn't do what you needed to do i'll give you one more chance and that is not it boss's orders he's but looking to see if there's anything for, for a prize card right now and i don't even think he has that option Interesting, interesting set of, a series of plays. Now the second seller wish. Now, just another boss's orders. Boss's orders really wanting to uh, to come out and play. Switching a skateboard. The only other options you kind of honestly you don't need any of these cards. You were saying you were saying earlier how Ross's deck is just full of uh, draw supporters, but he just cannot find one right now. Yeah, this is really not where you want to be. He does have the switch, so that he could. Uh, potentially bring out that Blacephalon, steal a prize card right now, and then try to find the three prize knockout. But I, this hand is not going to do it. I yeah, I just don't know. I don't see. I don't see it for Rossi, even despite having such a good start. Really, this that's where it all kind of fell uh, fell apart. Is uh, that reset stamp? We saw we saw how important it was against Michael Pramawat, and now we see how important it is against Ross Uh It's just such a crucial part of this Dragapult V Max strategy. Wow! Even deciding to leave up the Dedenne GX now, he knows that it would be a great way to just keep some damage counters on the board. So uh, if he if he lets Dedenne just absorb some of that, he can take that back uh, to the bench and and then start to load up a spear tomb if his hand ever does help him out there and but fione there is just the perfect foil to that game plan really 
at any point, he can just choose the Fione and force a promotion of either Jinx or Jirachi. Just great Pokemon to have your opponent bring up into uh, into the active spot. Yeah, this is where you really see the, the deck building from both these players really starting to come into play. Henry adding in that tech Fione there for himself is going to help out a, a ton here. Now Ross is going to lose one of his Jinx because he can't afford to lose that Jirachi right now. And uh, this just really helps out Henry now. He's going to get to take this big knockout and continue pushing. He's going to get himself down to three prize cards now. Uh, can go ahead and even use Shred. Uh, does that? Yeah, that does include the weakness as well. So uh, yeah. can go ahead and take the Shred knockout and avoid uh, putting the Max Phantom damage down that he doesn't really want to give Ross right now. Yeah. How, how interesting is this matchup, really? It seems like these decks are just interestingly matched up against each other um forcing yourself to not max phantom potentially even though in this particular case he did choose to do it um is just it brings up a wealth of different possibilities in uh in game plans and in uh execution of of these uh of these attacks and it's just really interesting to see the thought process behind these players and their decisions as now ross takes his next turn of the game promotes that jirachi we see how important it is for jirachi to find him some sort of a draw supporter but finding a spirit team off the top of the deck is also important already has an aurora energy but might need to find himself um a rainbow energy since jinx uh one of the jinx has already been knocked out he did not find a supporter there and he only plays the one to Dene, so he's not going to find anything with that quick pull. Man, that this is got brutal. so tough. It was looking so good for Ross. I mean, I'm, I'm not willing to say that he was, you know, going to win, but it was definitely looking like a very good spot for Ross. And that reset stamp just completely ruined everything here for Ross. As now it looks like a quick ball to find another Jirachi is maybe the only play that Ross really has available to him. Just another long-term play as he's going to be losing another prize here in in all likelihood. And if uh, if Henry has a, a boss's orders, then that could even be a knockout onto the uh, Dedene. I, I don't know. It's just um, there's a lot of things that Ross really has to uh, contemplate here. And you have to believe that he's feeling like he's getting very unlucky. Yeah, even boss's orders, uh, Zigzagoon scoop up would be able to, to take the game here right now. Remove three prizes. Uh, from the side and, and just win. So uh, you really have to start thinking, what, what what else do I have left if I'm Ross? And he is going to find that Jirachi, but he has no way to get out of the active spot. He's just going to have to to pass the turn once again. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be the end of uh, Ross's turn. Potentially going to use Ominous Posture first. Does do so. Moving one of the damage counters off of the Dene onto uh, Jinx just to secure... Um, a little bit of spread there. It's it's really Henry's game to take here at this point. Look at how large the hand is, and we said it. All we need is going to be one Zigzagoon and a uh, boss's orders combined with a uh, scoop up net, and that's going to be the game. Yeah, and uh, wisely, Ross decided to move that damage onto his Jinx instead of one of his Jirachis. To, didn't want to make it any easier for that damage uh, to to. Uh, come up and take the big knockout here doesn't want to make any anything uh any, anything any easier for henry now and henry's just looking through his deck saying all right i've, I've pretty much got this thing locked up i just need to to find the last few cards and we're there yeah, even if he doesn't get to win this turn, Henry's now starting to set up a second drag dragable VMAX. I mean, it's Henry's going for a potentially long-term game plan if he doesn't find the scoop up net. Um now there is the Galarian Zigzagoon it's going to uh, deal 10 damage onto the Jinx, and the research means that we don't get to see a boss's orders this turn. Oh, looky there. There's a scoop up net, <laughs> There's a scoop up net man, and that means Galarian Zigzagoon comes back up, then comes right back down to put additional damage onto Jinx, and that's going to mean all the Jinxes are going to be knocked out there. Uh, no more ways to really move your damage around, and that's exactly what Ross needs in order to, uh, to secure knockouts against this 320 hit point uh, Dragapult. Yeah, and uh, also does have uh, the power play just to, to take that chaotic spell out of the, the spot here now. Uh, is going to go down to one prize card, pinned his hand down very well. So even if Ross did have some reset stamp strategy, uh, that's not going to hurt him as much now. Uh, has this huge Pokemon in play, and with three cards in hand, it ha you have to think that Ross has to top deck a supporter right now if he wants to get out of this mess. Yeah, and 
I don't even know what the supporter would have to say short of you win the game. It's just it's so hard here. <laughs> Your opponent only has one card right, remaining. Right one. <laughs> I, I should have specified we needed a draw supporter. <laughs> Oh man, when your opponent has one prize card remaining and all and all of your attacking Pokemon have 60 hit points and you still need to get at the very minimum two knockouts to win, you do not feel good. Like that, let's just put it that way. Yeah, seeing these energies in play almost solidifies the fact that Henry's got this game locked up. Uh you start thinking of alternate routes to win games as far as can I lock something in the active spot? The answer to that is no, because your opponent plays scoop of net. <laughs> He can just pick up anything he wants, or if he has an energy, all these Pokemon have pretty low retreat costs. So uh, where do you go from here? Pretty much to the concession button, honestly. Yeah, we we saw uh, Cramelot be able to spam that concession button as soon as he felt the game was over. <laughs> Ross, on the other hand, though, decides to play it out, decides to uh, see if there's any hope. You know, all he needs is to avoid... All he needs is to avoid scoop up net or switch or an energy. There's, <laughs> energy that, switch, there's that knockout. <laughs> Half the deck was live here for Henry, and he was able to find the uh, switch that he needed in order to win this game one. Just, wow. Uh, it was uh, two different halves of the match, of the game. Yeah. Game uh, game one at the very beginning was all Ross. Henry was really struggling to get anything going. But then you see that reset stamp, and we've seen that time and time again in the past. Today, this game was no different, as after the reset stamp, all of the uh, any kind of game plan that Ross might have had fell right through was had to start struggling to find himself additional cards uh, additional ways to start attacking really and he was really never able to attack again yeah and i mean even looking at his deck you see he has three cynthia two marnie four professors research and he was looking with jirachis not able to find any draw supporter over like the last four turns and just couldn't get anything going definitely looking to switch that around in, the, in this second game here right now now, look at that starting Pokemon here for Henry as they, we do uh, begin game two. Henry having that Giratina, the Dimensional Breach Giratina, not at its best against uh, Spiritomb, to say the least. Yeah, this is not where you want to see your Giratina. <laughs> you don't want to be in the active spot. You kind of like playing it from hand, removing some special energy cards. Instead, he's like, ah, oh, this is going to be pretty annoying i'm gonna have to use i'm gonna have to switch this around and we saw ross loves to do uh wacky bosses orders stall plays and giratina is going to be a good target there now the rest of henry's hand was extremely good as it uh found him a quick ball to find the dragapult v had the energy already and still has a draw supporter as well as a second energy in hand so all he's really going to need is to find a dragapult v max and um well, already has a switch, so that's pretty much it. Uh, Henry's start is going to be much better game two than it was game one. That's going to put some pressure on Ross. Will he go for a multiple spirit tomb setup and just assume that his uh, two of his spirit tombs are going to get knocked out? But as long as he has one still in play, he'll be able to uh, get a return knockout onto Henry. There, there's a lot of different uh, things that Ross can do here, but either way, he's going to definitely have to face a more aggressive start out of Henry. Yeah, this is actually very interesting. Uh, it looks like Ross found his Fione, so he could just move that Dragapult into the active spot. If he could get enough damage counters into play uh, with some Spiritombs and uh, some Jinx, he'd be in a fantastic spot right now. He does, of course, have access to Dedene, so he, he isn't limited right now as far as this hand. And he could set up some very wacky, huge opening knockout uh, kind of scenario. I'm about to commit a cardinal sin in, uh, in streaming, and I'm about to try to do some math. I believe oh, no. that all you need is a Jinx, another Spirit Tomb, uh, a Rainbow Energy, and a Hustle Belt to get a knockout on a Dragapult. Oh, and actually, it's only a Dragapult, so it's not even a VMAX. You don't even need uh, you don't even need uh, to get the uh, the final damage counter. I don't believe. Yeah, look, he already has the Spear Tomb down. He, he has the Hustle Belt as well. Uh, finding the Jinx right now, things are starting to line up for him. It's going to be interesting. It really is. They, it's looking like it's going to be a powerful start here for Ross. Already having the Fione in hand. All he needs to do is just find a couple more pieces of the puzzle. If he does, it's a, it's a huge turn here for Ross. 
Yeah, very wisely. He's going to take the Jinx out of his deck first. He has two Jinx and three Spirit Tomb, assuming that all the counts are there. So you remove the Jinx from there. Then if you use the Dedenne with the Quick Ball, you're more likely to find your Spirit Tomb, and then you can set up that huge knockout. Yeah, having two Quick Balls is just so nice here if you're Ross. As we do have the first Quick Ball finding the Jinx, the second Quick Ball in all likelihood going to be finding the Dedenne. It's looking like... Interestingly enough, we're already seeing an ominous pressure. Uh, All right, this means so, that we're not going yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, so that actually just meant we're playing the long game. We're, we're not going to try to go all in against uh, uh, Henry. What that tells me, though, is that Ross feels comfortable um, in this matchup long term. It tells me that he doesn't feel like he needs to have a huge haymaker play. He thinks that he might be able to just uh, win this game if the cards play out the way they do. Here's the thing, though. If Spirit Tomb's already in play, if your opponent finds a Galarian Zigzagoon, then that's going to mean that Spirit Tomb's going to get knocked out. Yeah, and and this is the, the scenario that Henry was looking for and that Ross is regretting right now if if we do see the Zigzagoon because Henry found everything he needed. He had the second energy, he's got the, the VMAX down, and he also has a supporter coming for the turn as well. So uh, definitely could see that Spirit Tomb and the Jirachi falling, leaving him with just a Jinx and four cards. Looks like and here's he the other thing is the power so. plant. Yeah, the power plant also makes it so that it's going to be a little bit harder for Ross to have a consistent turn next turn. Obviously, he has a Cynthia, so that's pretty nice. But, I mean, that just puts some pressure on Ross because he needs so many pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, th this does make it fairly tricky. Uh, now I'm wondering where Henry wants to put damage. Obviously, uh, he, he could just shred and not take a knockout if he wanted to. But if you're going to place down this damage, uh, you probably want to put it all on a Jinx and not help out. Uh, any more uh, with the Spirit Tomb's ability along with all the other damage amplifiers. Oh yeah, you're all in on that Jinx. You definitely don't want to put any move, uh, any damage on Spirit Tomb. And now that Jinx Take me out here. <laughs> yeah. That Jinx is now looking at uh, perhaps the final turn of the game for itself as, um, remember, it's so important for that Jinx to stay in play throughout the remainder of the game. Uh, this is this is where I had a hard time getting behind Ross's opening play because Fioni doesn't do anything right now for him anymore, and it it had an opportunity to to really give him an extra turn, maybe even uh, two turns, uh, because of how far behind Henry would be, and now Henry gets to be on this super aggressive push. Yeah, I think that that just speaks to Ross's, uh, I guess, mentality. He he feels like playing it safe is perhaps the the, the correct play in this kind of a situation. You know, I, I can definitely understand the counter argument. I think that both of these players have some merit, but you're absolutely right that the Fione had a real opportunity to become uh, a key player in this game. All right, Instead, we're gonna see right back in. Oh, how about that hand? That gets you nowhere. Yeah. And that is absolutely miserable. There. He was trying to 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 get to the the damage point for Anguish Cry to take a knockout, but I don't think that that's possible anymore with a hand like this. Now that quick ball, really the only card he can play here. What's that quick ball going to find? Just the Jirachi? Put so much pressure on Jirachi to still her wish into something crucial. There's just nothing that I can think of that would put, uh, that would find, uh, that Ross could find right now to put himself in a good spot. Um, chooses to build Spite. I don't know. Um, well, we're going to find out how much damage this actually does end up being now because well, he does he, have... Uh, he already has the Hustle Belt, right? The, the Hustle Belt... He has, he has the Hustle Belt. Yeah. So adding uh, in the that Hustle is belt well. is a that, That's Anguish Cry for 320. Exactly. So that is the knockout there. Uh, now, that is true. That is that is three prizes out of Ross. We totally forgot about how uh, the damage already on the Jinx was going to be able to get spread around, and that is very important here for Ross as he gets himself a crucial knockout. However, keep in mind there's already an EK in play. If you have a Malamar, which we see in the hand here for, for Henry, that's going to mean a big knockout onto both Spiritomb and the Jinx on the bench. So despite that being a big knockout for Ross, it actually makes it a little bit more difficult for Ross, given the given the hand that he's got, to return a knockout. Well, definitely a lot more difficult to return the knockout on the following turn. So this is going to be a big sequence of plays here between these two players, but it looks like Henry uh, may be coming out on top. Yeah, uh, honestly, Ross's hand actually is 
pretty close to, to getting there. He has the rainbow energy along with the hustle belt, so he'll be able to do at least two damage counters, and then he could move uh, so any damage that he could find from a third spirit tomb uh, with the jinx, and he'd be able to get himself in range for another knockout, but he would need a little help from his hand here. So what he's going to need, uh, Will Ross, is going to be another spirit tomb. Um, I believe that another spirit tomb is spirit tomb. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I, I was counting the first uh, spirit tomb already as a given because of the quick ball, but he's going to need another right. uh, spirit tomb uh, in addition to that. With, I believe, uh, this is going to be the second spirit tomb taken down, or is this only going to be the first? I, I, I actually might only be the first. It might only yeah. be the first. <laughs> So there, that does mean that I believe that there's still three spirit team in the deck here for for Ross. And actually, you know, the more we think about this, the more I think about this. At least it seems like there's definitely a real chance Ross takes this game. Um, as uh, you you just have that weakness advantage, and the combined with the hustle belt, the math works out really well here for that 320 damage output. As we saw that knockout on the previous turn here for Ross. Yeah, I think the play that really opened up this matchup is the, the fact that Henry put the damage counters onto the Jinx, and that lined up for Ross to have just this uh, this resource to just continually pushing all these damage counters. He doesn't have to put these Spirit Tombs at risk and put them on the bench uh, as they'd easily be knocked out by Henry on the following turn. And instead, now he just keeps pulling from this Jinx and finding the damage counters. And another heads up play by Henry, choosing not to promote or not to become a Dragapult VMAX by any means, doesn't want to risk getting another three prize knockout. If you knock out a Dragapult V, it's not the end of the world. I'm you still have one prize remaining. You struggle really hard to take that final prize right there. And if I can uh reset stamp you or something along those lines, then I can really start to take uh take this game. Basically, what Henry's doing is not giving him that three prize knockout and telling him that he still has to go through a Dragapult V, which won't even be easy for Russ. Yeah, well, the thing is, Ross built his deck with a with that kind of mentality. He knows that his opponents can put himself in wacky spots, and he has that Blacephalon GX in his deck so that he could use Burst. Eight of those energies in his deck actually could uh, operate as the fire energy that he needs for the Blacephalon. So he does have a sneaky way to take that last prize if he is in situations like these, but having it in play and being reset stamped, finding that last energy, that's where it gets really tricky. And I believe Ross may uh, Ross always has to have three damage counters on his spirit tomb in order to get a knockout. Doesn't matter if it's Dragapult V or Dragapult V Max. Um, and as a matter of fact, on top of that, your opponent also has to have a uh, a damage counter on the Dragapult V in order for you to uh, knock it out with the with only three damage counters. Otherwise, you still need a Hustle Belt, or you need um, uh, or you need a fourth damage counter on your spirit tomb. Right. So these are all interesting things that Ross has to go through and think about. Remember that Jinx still in play because Dragapult VMAX did not attack, and instead it was a Dragapult V that attacked. Uh, so that means that we still have another turn of two Jinx in play, and now we see that Spirit Tomb come down. We see that Rainbow Energy uh, add a damage counter onto that Spirit Tomb. And actually, now you're going to be going down to only six counters on your Jinx, only two counters on your Jinx, making it a little bit harder for uh, Henry to get a knockout with Max Phantom onto that Jinx. He's going to need the help of the Galarian Zigzagoon. Yep, and Ross is now thinking over on his end, what, else, what do I need to set up here to, to get myself out of uh, that awkward reset stamps uh, setup, because he knows that that's probably going to be the way that Henry comes through in the end. And it looks like he does find that Lana's fishing rod. He's going to put that spirit tomb back into his deck, give himself multiple Jirachis to help find cards and keep that research in hand, even though he could have used it right now. He wants that as a top deck on a following turn or uh, to be in his hand oh. if the reset stamp isn't there. Oh. Look at that with Zeppelon GX right off the prize. With the energy. Uh, just an absolutely crucial prize. That means that we're really going to need to see a reset stamp out of uh, out of Henry here, as that was about the best possible set of prizes. And look uh, there! Henry and look at that reset stamp off the top with that stellar wish. About as uh, uh, this is the fairy tale for for Henry here, as that's the perfect card to find in that situation. Does have a boss's orders to go with it potentially, but that reset stamp was just absolutely crucial. And I don't know if uh, Henry yep. realizes that or not yet. This boss's orders is actually pretty great, too. He gets to remove the Jinx from play now. He could take the double knockout on the Jinx and the Spirit Tomb. 
Remove all damage counters from play. There's no Spirit Tomb, one Jinx, and a couple Jirachis between you and the game here. Uh, as long as this hand doesn't have uh, anything in it, Ross is going to go ahead and lose that Placephalon, and all those great cards go down to just one card in hand, and it's going to have to be a good one because he's in trouble. And looky there, it's the research! The Professor's research off the top for Ross. The perfect, the perfect one-card hand. It doesn't get any better. And Ross now has a real chance of winning this game. All he's gonna, all he's gotta find is, of course, if he can find the, the dream of knocking out the Dragon Ball VMAX, even better. But really, all he needs is that Blacephalon GX, a way to retreat a Jirachi, and then a way to attack with the Blacephalon GX. If he has that, that's it. That's game. We're going to game three. Well, it is all up to these next few draws. The top deck coming up so crucial here does find energy. That's, that's kind of an unfortunate one. Yeah, that's kind of an unfortunate one because you have to decide, do you research away the energy, which could be a very key part of that puzzle, or do you sell or wish and hope to find what? Uh, I can't think of a single card. Yeah, it, that even a card wouldn't be mind. good enough there. Yeah. So there's a couple of spirit tombs. Nothing. He's missing the Hustle Belt. He doesn't have the Rainbow Energy as well, so he wouldn't be able to get this damage down because he's missing the Double Jinx combo. Oh, I don't man, know if Jirachi is... can find him a way out of this. Has an escape board already, so there's... Let's see. Um, there's an Aurora Energy. That's not the energy you want to see. Oh, what am I talking about? If he found this, if he found the Quick Ball, he'd just win right here. He has the Aurora Energy and the Skateboard, but he missed it. He has the yeah. Acro Bike here now to look for it. I got so caught we're up on the Spirit Tomb. Ball. About the yeah, we're, look we're looking for a Quick Ball out of Acro Bike, or of course the Blacephalon GX. Either one of those will work. Instead, finds the Hustle Belt. Scoop up Net, though. Scoop yeah, up the, Net the, doesn't allow you to bring back the Jirachi. He has one more shot now to, to find that quick ball with the Jirachi. He could just go ahead and take the game if that happens. Doing the math right now, seeing if there's any way to get this lined up. If that Aurora energy was a rainbow energy, he would have it. But instead, he's going to have to take the scoop up belt and try again, or the scoop up net and try again. Yeah, uh, I like that choice. I know that Ross was looking at both options, decided to go with the scoop of net, the, uh, what I believe is definitely the correct choice there. And now scoop of net gives you another look at it. Remember, all Stellar Wish needs is a quick ball. We see two quick balls in the discard pile. That means there's still two left in the deck potentially. And then on top of that, if you just find a, a Blacephalon GX off of like an Acro Bike, that's definitely another op uh, possibility. So there are a lot of opportunities here for Ross to take this game despite the board uh, uh, that that Henry's got going for him. There's even scoop up net on your spirit tomb if you have double jinx, but yeah, he doesn't have the double jinx. So yeah, I think it is just going to be Jirachi looking for a quick ball now. Plays the skateboard to retreat the Jirachi. Now choosing to stellar wish the net with the next Jirachi has oh. nothing. He's it's just no. a piece once again. Yeah, the scoop up net though is the the best possible card there. No. With one already in hand, it looks like he just is going to uh, take that research and just think, you know what, if I throw all these cards again, I'll find my Blacephalon and we'll close this game out. He's already um, used uh, all the Jirachis. He's used his um, retreat for the turn, so it uh, can't really work in another Jirachi Stellar Wish here. I, oh, man. I don't know. I really think that the scoop of net was... Ah, uh, who knows, man? Who knows? It's it's just such a tough spot. I think that Ross is just hoping to uh, avoid getting a two prize knockout from yeah, the, uh, from Henry. That scoop up net means that he was afraid of Zigzagoon scoop up net on the other side. He wants to make it so that seventy and eighty are hard numbers uh, to hit. Uh, concurrently, following maybe a draw supporter instead of a, a boss's orders, of course, and. Uh, Henry's just going to play down every card, go for this Cynthia, and see what he finds here. And now that's that's a handful of uh, of item cards. No direct way to win. Obviously, you're you're really looking for like Zigzagoon and and like scoop up nets and stuff like that. But he just doesn't have any of those. Has a quick ball. Potentially, the quick ball going to be a way to get a zigzagoon. 
Look, yeah, looking I at it, I think he wants the zigzagoon plus shred here. He doesn't want to put any damage on the board. This is like if he puts damage on the jinx, he, he can he can put himself in an awkward spot with spirit to him. Switches to stellar oh, wish. Oh, Another reset stamp. Oh my goodness! We see how brutal that card has been against them. The reset stamp, just the most powerful card in this late game scenario, as your opponent has something like an eight card hand, shuffles it all away, and only draws one. With that Jirachi about to be knocked out, that means that it's only going to be a Jinx, and it's going to be a one card hand. And the one card hand is a Mew. That's going to mean one last draw for Ross before the game is actually over. And we've seen time and time again how Reset Stamp can just brutalize your opponent. And in this particular spot, it has done so. One card hand here for Ross. One prize remaining for both players. Mew in hand. Jinx in play. We need a huge top deck out of Ross. There's a oh! Cynthia. All right. He's a looking Cynthia for off the top. A skateboard plus combination, maybe scoop up net. The energies. Oh, he's up, so GX. close. He finds the Denny, there's but there's a power band in, in play. There is a Jirachi that gives you one last look at things. You would have to use your energy to retreat, though. This might have just sealed the deal here for, for Henry. This really oh, might have just finally so sealed the deal for Henry. Gross. There's already a Jirachi with an escape board on it, so Whirlpool suction. Maybe at this point you make Henry make a mistake. Uh, and yeah, Henry if he brought up a Jirachi that, there. Maybe there was some, and even no, even then it's it's. Well, here's the thing: is so Henry much. promoting the Dedenne means that he has to have another energy in hand. Um, choosing to attach the energy and retreat, the only real play that Ross can make at this point. Stellar wishing. Um, already played a supporter for the turn, has access to a hustle belt or I believe even a, uh, an acro bike. It's just, it's not, it's not what he needs. That re that reset stamp was just as powerful as they come. Finding an acro bike, there's, we see that Blacephalon GX really just taunting Ross. We saw how Ross was just a turn away from winning this game, but instead double reset stamp has just been enough to seal the deal here for, here for Henry, I believe. It's going to take a little, nothing short of a miracle here for Ross to take the second game. Yeah, he just keeps looking inch by inch, trying to find the, the pieces that he needs to close this game out. He's been so close over the last uh, two turns now, and I don't think that these cards are going to do it there for him. He finds boss's order yeah. so that he has a potential way to, to take out a Jirachi on the following turn, but I if don't know if he's going to turn. Yeah, if that acro bike, I mean, that's a that's a what if, right? But if that acro bike would have found a stadium, we would have been able to see a Danny GX steady change. That could have just changed everything, right? But instead, acro bike finding nothing really bosses orders is about as dead a card as you can have in the spot because your opponent is in all likelihood going to win the game on the following turn. Ross knows that. Ross is just playing to the few possible uh, outs that he might have, and that's building spite at the end of the turn here for Ross. Does uh, does Henry have the energy to seal this game? There's that energy see it right there. There's the well played. Max Phantom wins the game here for Henry, and that means it's a two nothing victory for Henry Brand over Ross Cawthon in this battle of Dragapult V Max versus Spiritu. Wow! And uh, honestly, what an amazing game from both those players. Uh, the the way wow. that Ross was was picking through, trying to find those points, he, he found exactly what he needed to to put himself in the game almost had the Blacephalon there to take the, the game two there and go to a game three but those reset stamps they just kept coming and kept coming down to the low card hands even that one card hand at the very end it just wasn't able to find the pieces he needed you know Kyle game one was really kind of anticlimactic we saw how the reset stamp just took Ross out of the game and Ross was never able to recover game two on the other hand was just about as exciting a game as we've casted in a very long time. There, it was back and forth all the way. Really, Ross had a chance to seal the game multiple times.